everyone. Welcome to episode 39 of the D-Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia, also known as Liddy Knits 2 on Ravelry and Read Knit Run on Instagram. You can also buy my handmade bags and hand-dyed yarn on Etsy at D-Hard House Creations. You can also find my patterns on Ravelry under D Hard House Designs. Who knew? All right, uh, this is my knitting, crocheting, fiber arts podcast. So welcome if you are a new viewer, and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, yeah, it's another gorgeous day here in West Texas. The sun is shining. Uh, there were clouds in the sky earlier today. Now there are none. Yes. Uh, but today is going to be a high of 98 degrees, which is so much better than the 108 of last week. So that's something, right? And actually, when I was checking out my weather app, it said next week there will be a day where the high is only 90. And I'm really excited for that day. I really want fall to be here. Like, you don't even know. So, um, it has been a week since my last yarn confession, so let's get into it, guys. I want to start off the podcast with announcements. I haven't done announcements in so long, and I really need to do it on every episode. So, I was really good, and I sat down and I wrote show notes uh, during lunch today. So, to remind me of everything I have to say. So, for those of you who don't know, maybe you do need a reminder, I have two, two knit alongs going on right now. Uh, they're both about making blankets. I keep calling them knit alongs, but they're not. They're make alongs. So <laughs> there is the cozy couch make along where um, you can post any finished adult size blanket. And I have the cozy crib make along where you can post any finished baby blanket. So no matter what size blanket you're making, you can enter it into one of the make-alongs for a prize at the end of the year. Excuse me. Yes, so I'm calling it a make-along because you don't have to knit. You can crochet or sew or weave or message me on Facebook some more, please, people. Um, <laughs> no, I have, I should turn my ringer off, but I posted some stuff for sale on Facebook and people are asking me about it. So I just need to turn my turn my volume down. Okay, there we go. I'll just vibrate. Okay. So, um what was I talking about? Knit make alongs. Yes. So it doesn't matter what craft. And it doesn't have to be the ones that I listed. If you are using a craft that I don't even know about and you make a blanket and post it that is even better because then I also get to learn something uh, so yeah it's all about finishing blankets and like I said there's a separate thread for baby blankets versus adult size blankets and uh, every time you finish one all I ask is that you post a photo in the Ravelry group and you'll be entered in for a prize at the end of the year so the Ravelry group is D Heart House podcast. You can find that at Ravelry.com under the groups section. Feel free to join, become a member. I post all of the show notes there as well as host knit-alongs and make-alongs and all the things. So, um, yes, those are both going on. Whips are highly encouraged. Double dipping is highly encouraged. Please enter your blankets into other make-alongs. And get more chances to win prizes because prizes are awesome. Okay, I'm having coffee. I went shopping yesterday. This is news to everyone. Uh, <laughs> scintillating stuff here. I went shopping yesterday and I, on a splurge a while ago, this was during the school year, I purchased a bag of Folgers caramel coffee and it was amazing um I do put uh, creamer in my coffee and I love the caramel flavor anyway I uh, 
I didn't want to go for the what six to nine dollar I can't remember how much the six to nine dollar bag of coffee because what I'll do is I'll have regular coffee in the morning I have two cups of regular coffee in the morning and then I allow myself one cup in the afternoon unless it's been a really bad day then I'll have two in the afternoon but this is my one cup of afternoon coffee and my afternoon coffee I want to be a treat it's something I look forward to now that I I sort of program myself to. Um, so I kind of splurge and get the flavored coffee. But this time I just got the off brand great value, and it's the creme brulee flavor, but it pretty much just tastes like caramel. Mm. Anyway, not that I've ever had creme brulee, but anyway. It's caramel, and that's all I care about, <laughs> but it's amazing. So, I don't know what it is. Like, I've had regular coffee with caramel creamer, and caramel coffee with just regular creamer. And for some reason, the, f the caramel flavor in the coffee just has a stronger has a stronger taste to it. It just tastes so much better. I don't know why that is. But I love it. Anyway, it was only like three dollars and some change for this bag of coffee. And instead of like six or nine dollars, I went for it. And I'm glad I did. So uh just, you know, food for thought. I know I said this was my nitty crafty podcast, and I haven't talked about knitting much yet. Okay, so we're still in the announcement section. I already have make-alongs going, uh, and I talked about the group. I wanted to give you guys a heads up, because I have a knit-along coming. I'm so excited about it, I can't even keep it a secret. I'm horrible at keeping secrets. So, <laughs> alright. For the fall season, okay... Now, I literally looked up the dates of the fall season. And fall runs September 22nd through December 21st. So here's the deal. I want to run a knit along for the entirety of the fall season, like the calendar fall season. So starting September 22nd, okay, I'm going to start a knit along called All the Shawls of Fall. What do you think? <laughs> okay, shawl knitting is my favorite right now. And I wanted to start the knit along right now, but I thought it's so much better during fall. So, All the Shawls of Fall will be all about knitting shawls. Okay? So. Whips will count. So if you want to get started now, but then you can't finish it until after sep September 22nd or after. So that, so like this one I finished. I'm going to talk about it in a second. I could not enter this into the knit along because I've already done everything, right? And it's July 28th, so it's a little too early. But if you want to, you know, cast on a shawl and then not quite finish it, and then finish it during the fall season, and then enter it into the knit along you can. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's going to be all about knitting shawls. So, I have been designing shawl patterns. So what will happen is if you use one of my shawl designs, you can enter in twice you can use anyone else's shawl patterns and you can enter in once. So knitting a shawl gets you one entry for sure. If you use one of my patterns, you get two entries. So you get to double your chances of winning a prize, which I haven't completely set aside yet, but I have things in mind. They're kind of scattered all over this craft room and I need to put them all together. So there will be a prize and I will show it. Um, either next time or when the new long officially starts. But I have things in mind and it will be awesome. So, that is coming soon. That will not start until September 22nd, which I'm super excited about. Okay, so 
finished objects. I have a finished object. I'm wearing it. Uh, I had this finished last time, technically. It was off the needles, but <laughs> I hadn't woven in the ends or blocked it. So it is now ends free. They are all woven in and it has been blocked. Which, okay, I know about blocking. Uh, I've done it before. <laughs> Mainly, I've done it before for crochet. So I was a crocheter much more before a knitter. <laughs> And for a while there, I was crocheting a lot of doilies. So uh, my grandmother had passed down a bunch of doily patterns that she had collected over the years. And I was crocheting them and, and thinking of her. And, and for those of you who have never made a doily, um, if you don't block those things out, they just look like a ruffled mess. So... I uh, used to, when I was younger, like in my teenage years, I would crochet them in, and I didn't know about blocking. So I thought when you were finished crocheting, like you cut the end and you're done, it should look exactly like the picture. Of course it never did. It looked all wonky and stretched out on this side because that's where I had finished working it and the weight of the whole doily was pulling it down. And I didn't, I didn't know anything about blocking um, until, you know, I watched some videos and read some, some tutorials and blocked a doily. Uh, I crocheted one while I was in college in my undergrad and I blocked it and I starched it and I still have it today and I love it. Anyway, so I've done blocking before with crochet. I hadn't really blocked much with knitting. Not that it's really any different. But it, blocking a shawl is different than blocking a doily. <laughs> I will tell you that. Because these things, like this one is huge. Okay, and when you wet this down with water, it becomes very heavy. As opposed to a doily crocheted with, you know, cotton thread. It, it just doesn't get as heavy. Anyway, it's a long intro to this. So I blocked this and it looks amazing. I'm so thankful I did it. But it was definitely a painful process because the thing was so heavy and it, it wouldn't... I couldn't get the stripes to lay straight on the blocking mat and I was really worried that when it all dried and finished that it was just going to look ridiculous with crooked stripes on it, and it doesn't, so I'm very thankful. I used zero pins to block this. I have um, foam mats that I laid out on the floor, and I just set this down on top of it, turned on the ceiling fan, shut the door to my craft room, and let it sit overnight. And that's all I did to block this thing. And I love it. Okay, so... Let me just show you. I used three colors to knit this. Uh, right, okay, so the first color is a very, very soft pink. The first color is Cloudborn Fibers, and I even brought the tags in here, guys. I'm so organized today. Cloudborn Fibers in their Superwash Merino Fingering Weight yarn, which is sock twist, apparently. And the colorway is Petal, and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous soft pink color. So, one thing I didn't grab though were the balls of yarn left over from this thing. Anyway, it's a gorgeous soft pink color. Okay, then I added in the second color, which is this gorgeous speckle. Okay, and some brioche. Uh huh. The gorgeous speckle yarn. Oh, let me show you the solid section. The solid section. This is all the speckle yarn. Oh my gosh, that is Teeny Button Studio. Uh-huh. She has her own podcast. It is called The Cherry Pearls Podcast. If you don't watch it, you should. Check it out. She is a much more established yarn dyer than I am. Uh, and her yarn is gorgeous. So this is on her soft sock base in the Sally's Pralines colorway. 
I love it so much. It has a beautiful cream base to it, and then she speckled in like <sighs> this gorgeous pink and gold, and there's a little bit of like like a tannish gray color. Anyway, oh, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful, and it's blocked out so the garter isn't as smooshy as it was before. Anyway, and then I brought in this third color, this nice solid, it looks like gray, but it's more like a brownish gray. In fact, it's called Shayla Heather, another Cloudborn one. The Cloudborn brands can be purchased online at Craftsy.com, and they're super, super uh, reasonably priced. I was going to say cheap, but I don't, they're, it's quality fiber, it's not cheap, it's just not super expensive so someone who's working on a budget can afford it anyway okay so the shawl itself <laughs> I love it it's a triangle shape this is one of my new designs guys so I haven't released the pattern yet in fact I would love if some people would test knit this before I release the pattern okay it's um garter and brioche so you definitely have to know how to brioche knit okay to knit this excuse me you do not need to know how to brioche pearl though you could um but yeah there's brioche in here and you just need three colors of yarn you can use speckled you can use variegate you can use solids um i picked three colors that sort of coordinated with each other because this pink is in the speckle and so is this grayish brown color. So I knew they would match. Um, I thought I would get a little more contrast with the pink than I did, but whatever. I got the contrast here with the grayish brown, so I'm happy with it. Anyway, it's a big triangle shawl. I love it so much. Um, one thing I didn't realize with blocking is that it took away the, the smooshiness of the shawl. So, you know, when you knit, when you knit garter, it's, it's smooshy. Uh, <laughs> it's nice and, and thick and bouncy. And now that I've blocked this, it's lost the thickness because I stretched it out so but anyway so yes I use cloudborn fibers and teeny button studio yarn oh my gosh I just this section right here is my favorite uh, it has garter and brioche it's a triangle shape and this pattern is what I'm calling the reverie shawl uh, by D Hart House Designs. That's me. Uh, so you just need three colors to knit it. Uh, I used U S size four needles, but you could always change that up. Um, that would just change, you know, the size of the shawl that you're getting. And um, yes, I am going to be posting the pattern at some point. But if you are interested in test knitting this shawl, which test knitting the shawl, all I ask is that you take some yarn out of your stash or go out and buy yarn whatever um knit through my whole pattern and then give me feedback um you know things like was my stitch count off uh was this part confusing you don't know what to do please help oh my god asap um or everything is fine that kind of thing um and for knitting it test knitting it for me uh, I would be giving you the pattern for free. So I would send you the pattern, you would knit it. Um, after receiving your feedback and making any updates to the pattern, I would send you an updated version of the pattern, the same one I'd post for everyone. Um, you just get it for free for knitting it for me. So if you are interested in doing that, you can either comment below or message me on Ravelry. And again, I am Liddy Knits 2 on Ravelry. So if you're interested in that, that would be amazing. I do want to have the pattern up and available in time for the 
all the shawls of fall knit along in September. So I would love to get um, feedback back by early September. So that'd be about a month to test knit, which I knit this thing in a week. So I think a month is probably enough time. I mean, I knit this a week straight while I'm on summer vacation from school. So, <laughs> um, so for those of you who don't get off, you know, two, three months of summer like I do, um, <laughs> well, I only get like a month and a half off because I did teach part of the summer, just not the part that I knit this. Anyway. Okay, so the reverie shawl. I still need to take pictures to uh, put those in the pattern, but I need help. I need Michael to take pictures for me. Should be awkward and fun. Anyway. Okay, so that's my finished object. I have some works in progress over here. All right. So I'm going to go through, let's go largest to smallest. How does that sound? Okay, so my largest work in progress has no needles in it. It's not finished yet. It's still a work in progress. But, <laughs> oh, I love this. Okay, so dad's sweater. Okay, I'll just show you this first. All right. I bound off the neck this morning. So this was knit bottom up and I bound off the neck this morning. I still have to add the collar and the button band so it's not technically finished yet. But I need dad to try it on so if there's anything that's not fitting maybe we can fix it before I put the final touches on it. And I also need to ask him what kind of buttons he wants and maybe go shopping with him or something. But yeah this pattern uh, is called the Ranger by Jared Flood. It is a paid-for pattern available on Ravelry. Uh, I am knitting this out of a worsted weight yarn because it's a worsted weight pattern. The yarn I'm using is Karen. Uh, I bought this in one pound skeins at Joann's. Uh, so yes, it is 100% acrylic. It's very thick, it's very warm. I think this is going to almost serve as more of a jacket than a sweater because it's so warm. Uh, I used US size five needles for the body and then US size four needles for all the ribbing. So, yeah. Uh, and last week I showed you my bent up Chowgu needle, which was my US size four needle. I did get my replacement needle in the mail. I ordered another one. So I do actually have a US size 4 needle that I can use for the collar and the button bands. So. Anyway, this thing, all right, I think I had like 400 stitches on the needle or something. At least 300 because at least 300 stitches. I think it was closer to 400. Anyway, the needles were so crowded with stitches <laughs> that I couldn't stretch this thing out to see how big it really was. And <laughs> I told you guys last week, my dad's a big guy. So while I was working on this, I was kind of looking at it like, I'm not sure this is big enough. But now that I've bound off, I'm telling you right now, this thing is big enough. Am I back far enough? Yeah. It's big enough. In fact, looking at it, I'm kind of like, is it going to be too big? I don't know. So I need him to try it on so we can figure out if I need to modify the button band at all. Um, if he's wanting a little extra room, I can always make the button band a little bit thicker. Or if 
or smaller <laughs> or whatever. So um, I'm excited to have him try this on and I'm really excited to finish this thing. So hair caught in my lip gloss. Yeah, I was so happy to get through all those decreases and it just, oh my gosh, it looks amazing. I love it. I love it. Um, it's a very well-written pattern. It's very easy to follow. So if you're looking for a nice um, sort of unisex pattern, uh, it is a, like I said, a bottom-up cardigan pattern. Uh, by Jared Flood. It's called The Ranger and it's super nice. Yeah. I will say though, because of all the knitting that has gone into this, I am super sick of worsted weight yarn. Super sick of it. Like, it hurts my hands to knit with it. Um, I think that's part of the reason I've been working on shawls so much is because I'm using my fingering weight yarn and bigger needles than you use for sock needles and so it's kind of that happy medium of like thin yarn but bigger needles and you get through it faster so oh that coffee's good okay so my next work in progress is another shawl that I'm designing and <laughs> I'm actually going to share this with you guys now before I finish it because I've already decided that I'm going to post this pattern for free. So why not just start talking about it? So this is going to be another triangle shawl. And <laughs> also I'm using US size 4 needles. I'm using my interchangeable set. Um, these are knit. Oh god, they're Melodies of Life. What brand is that? Oh my god. It'll come to me. Anyway, they're um, my interchangeable set, the only one I have. Okay. Uh, but I love them. They, they do exactly what I want interchangeable needles to do. So, I just am untangling my yarn here. All right, yeah, so it'll go this way. Weird. Mm -hmm. All right, if I can spread this out, this is good before it gets too thick here. So, <laughs> what do you think? I'm totally digging the stripes, can you tell? Yeah, I'm loving it. So, I am knitting this out of a white birch gradient set. So I bought this yarn at DFW Fiberfest in 2017. So last year. Yep. So it's just a gradient purple set on one side. And then I have a solid color here. This is another... Um, Cloudborn, no, this is Cascade. This is Cascade Yarn, Heritage Cascade, just a uh, merino nylon blend, just in a very basic cream color to contrast. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, isn't this amazing? So, it'll go this, this way. I wish I had another person here who could help me hold things. I am so afraid this is going to fall off the needle. So the solid colors will go at the top and the stripes will go at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. So my thought with this is that you can use your mini skeins with a either a coordinating color or a contrasting color or you could use the mini skeins over here and do the solid, co solid color over here. You could use bits and bobs you have left over, you can just, you can do whatever. You could use just two colors on this and call it a day. Um, but I, I am loving it. The only thing that you have to worry about is that this is intarsia knitting. So we're splitting the color on 
each row here, basically. So when you switch colors here, right, you have to wrap the yarn before you move to the next color. Otherwise, if you don't wrap the yarn around the other strand, you'll get this hole in your fabric, so you gotta make sure you're you're doing that when you switch colors. But other than that, this thing is easy because it's garter stitch, it's stripes, I've even got it so there's a stitch marker where you're going to be switching colors so you don't have to count your stitches all the time. So yeah, I'm really excited. So um, yeah, so I'm knitting this using mini skeins. I've got my gradient scent, gradient scent, gradient set from white, white birch. Oh my gosh. All right, now I took my tag box to the other room. Anyway, I am loving this knit. First of all, it's it's mindless enough that I can do it while watching TV, but it's interesting enough that I'm not bored. And what makes it super fun is switching the colors here. When I finish up with a mini skein and I switch to the next color. So yeah, here's my solid color that I have going. My Cascade Heritage. And I'm sure the color is just a number, but it's like this creamy gray. Because it's not cream, but it's not gray. But it's like a creamy gray. And then I have my gradient set just all in here. There we go. Yep. So the lightest color, I didn't use, okay. Because on the corner you've got these shorter stripes. And I didn't want this section to be crazy long. So I still have a lot of that in comparison to the mini skein I started with. And then and then the tangled mess. And then the next color here. A lot less left over. I actually went for the same number of stripes. And then the third color, I played a little yarn chicken and I won. This is all I have left. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's hilarious. Uh, and this is the fourth color which I have on right now. So yeah. The set came with a total of six skeins, so the other two are right here. And these are 25 gram minis. But like I said, you just, when you run out of a color, you just switch to the next one. So I love this project. It is so much fun. Uh, I'm housing this in one of my bags, one of my D Hard House Creations bags. And I just, <laughs> I didn't put any closures on this. I'm lazy. So when you order bags off from Etsy in my shop, you get to choose the closures, either a zipper or snaps. Uh, I'm going to put a zipper on this. <laughs> it's probably going to have to wait till I finish this project. <laughs> but then it'll be ready for fall, and I can put... I've, I love this for shawls. So anyway, all the shawls of fall. I'm so ready. Anyway, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to be, once I, oh my gosh, I have to set this down. I'm going to destroy this. So like I said, I am going to be offering this pattern for free. So I will have a free shawl pattern out there. And I'm really excited. I'm so excited. I'm just going to keep saying that. Okay. So... That wraps up the somewhat bigger projects. Then I have a couple of socks that I'm working on. So have the grocery girls like patented the whole sock talk thing? Is that just like that's theirs and no one else can touch it? I'm really curious because no one else says sock talk on their podcast. I'm referencing grocery girls right here. The grocery girls podcast. 
Uh, they're super popular, two Canadian sisters, and they're hilarious to watch. Anyway, so this is my sock segment. Uh, I had just started these, um, the sock last time, and yeah, I'm now on the heel. So my needles are now trapped on here, I cannot... <laughs> Perfect time to podcast right when you start the heel. Anyway, pff, I'm I'm a genius. So these are from Michael. Um, and I just realized I'm not wearing my wedding ring because I was washing dishes and I took it off. Bad me. Uh, <laughs> I'll put it on next time. So <laughs> we're newlyweds. I'm new to the whole wedding ring thing, but um. These are for Michael. The yarn is Patton's Croy and the color is Eclipse. So these are the Eclipse socks. I am working a one by one rib on the top of the foot and just plain stockinette on the bottom. I love how clean the stripes look in stockinette stitch versus the ribbing, but yeah, anyway. I am using the Fish Lips Kiss Heel pattern right now, which costs a dollar on Ravelry. It's a really simple short row heel pattern. Uh, and once I get past the heel, I will be doing one by one rib all the way around the leg. So on the front and back of the sock. But I'm trying something a little different with these socks. And that is making somewhat of a gusset. So, me this book, I think for Christmas one year, and I love it. This thing's amazing. The Sock Knitter's Handbook. Uh, yeah, and there's the author's names up there, so you can more easily search for this thing. But yeah, this is so cool. He got me one that's spiral bound that will lay flat very easily so I can reference it while I am knitting. So, I am just looking up a definition because I can't remember what is what. So heels. Yeah, let's go there. Okay, so I found a better picture in the book to talk about what I'm what I'm talking about. So I love how they color coded this in a sock. Okay, so here is a sock. I'm so smart. Uh, with a short row heel. So you can see all of the white parts of the sock are just knitting the sock, the foot and the leg. And then the only thing they did for the heel was a short row heel. And that's what the Fish Lips Kiss heel is, is just adding work right here to short row heel back and forth. Done. Okay, there's no prep beforehand or work to do afterward. It's just is just a heel. So up here, um, this pink portion right here is the gusset where you actually add stitches to the sock before you get to the heel or, or after you work the heel, right? It's on one side. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is sort of add a gusset to a short row heel. Okay, so I love working a short row heel when it comes to knitting the sock. It does make for a nice tight fit in my socks. However, I would like it if they weren't quite so tight right around there. Um, so, I am trying it out. I'm experimenting on Michael's sock. But um, what I did is, so I'm knitting these toe up and in the one inch before I was going to start the heel, I added a few stitches to the bottom of the sock. Okay, so what that's going to do, excuse me, is add a few stitches into that short row heel. Okay, excuse me. Now, I'm thinking that because I put more stitches in here, I won't do, I'll cut out a couple rows of the heel, but it will still increase the girth of the sock. 
So it should fit a little bit better around that heel section. And if it turns out to not really do anything, then it's not worth the effort. And if it starts to fit all wonky, then I'll know not to do this. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. I added um, four stitches on each side. So I'm thinking I'll do two less rows in the heel, which will be four less rows total, two on each side. And we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, it's a work in progress. But yes, I'm on the heel. This is my treadmill knitting. I knit this while on the treadmill. So the yarn uh, is in my yarnet. And my yarnet goes in one of the cup holders on the treadmill. In fact, it's more of like a, a tray rather than a cup holder. So it just sits there with the rubber bottom. If the treadmill had a cup holder, though, the uh, silicone bottom comes off and then it's nicely shaped to fit in a cup holder, which is amazing. <laughs> so any of you that... Um, work out on equipment that have cup holders or trays and you could possibly knit while exercising. Uh, the yarn it is amazing. So yarn it, there we go, is the name. Uh, can you see that? Yarn it. Anyway, if you just search yarn it on the internet it will pop up and you can order from their company. They have all kinds of things and all kinds of colors. They have yarnets with mustaches and that are glittery and different colors and they're pretty cool. So <laughs> I have to resist going to that website so I don't get another one. <laughs> I already have two. I ordered a two pack for Mother's Day and gave one to my mom and then she gave it back because it didn't quite work for her. So. But now that she's knitting, she might actually like it. So I might offer that back up to her again. Anyway, I have another sock whip. So this is my last work in progress I'm going to talk about. So I love, I absolutely love knitting striped yarn for socks. It's so fun because you get those color changes without all the ends to weave in. And it's super fun. So... <laughs> I laugh because this is some of my hand dyed yarn and I have this posted in the shop. So um, fall is coming and we all have to get prepared. I'm so ready. So I dyed up some Halloween yarn. In fact, this is called Halloween with an exclamation point. Anyway, it's orange and black and white. And I knitted, I knitted up. I wound it up into this fancy ball that separates out the stripes and everything because I've been wanting to do that for a while and since I had this whole thing all laid out because I was dyeing self-striping yarn I thought it was a perfect opportunity to try it so yeah I love this so um, the stripes are tonal they're not like a solid stripe and I love that I love that effect so the orange and black are tonal and then the white is just undyed sections. <laughs> it's amazing. All right, and here's how it knits up. So I dyed the yarn and then started knitting it the same day after it dried because I couldn't wait to find out if it was going to turn out like I wanted it to. And it did. And I'm so happy. So yeah, it goes orange, a little bit of white, black, a little bit of white, orange, etc. So I'm knitting these for me, and I'm knitting these top down. Uh, the other sock I just showed you, I'm knitting toe up. Mm -hmm. But I did the German Twisted Cast On, which is my favorite. Uh, and I just think it's a much cleaner look than any of the Bidoffs. I don't know why. But this cast on, the Twisted German Cast On, is so clean and stretchy and just everything I want in the top edge of my sock. 
So I think, and and I don't mind doing Kitchener Stitch on the toe. I don't have trouble with it. So you know what? I think I'm just going to keep, I'll just do some socks top down, some socks toe up, and just, it doesn't matter. But I do think this is a much cleaner edge, and I really like that. And I definitely wanted that when knitting up some of my own self-striping yarn. So, uh, yes, you can order your own Halloween yarn from D Hard House Creations on Etsy. Excuse me. The search feature on, et on Etsy is atrocious. And I don't know why that is. But uh, if you type in D Hard House Creations on Google or any search engine, it will bring up a link to my Etsy shop, uh, which is a much easier way to find it. So, yes. Alrighty. Oh. Two socks, a shawl, and a sweater. And a finished shawl that needs test knitting. So, again, if you're interested in test knitting, um, either comment below or send me a message on Ravelry. I will be posting show notes in the Ravelry group called D Heart House Podcast. And, yeah. I don't even know. I'm so burnt out from talking about knitting. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Happy knitting. Bye.